Good morning, and welcome to Messiah. As they say in some places, the people of God are in the house. Rejoice. <laughs> Musicians in the house, rejoice. <laughs> the choir's in the house, rejoice and the pastor's in the house, so we can rejoice, and we are just about ready to begin worship this morning. Um, the announcements that I'm supposed to make say that I'm supposed to remind everyone to turn your phones off or on silent, and sometimes that means your watches as well. Um, I don't know anything about that stuff. <laughs> My phone's somewhere else, very far away. Uh, so in any case, uh, I think we're just about ready um, then to begin worship. Are there any other things that need to be mentioned immediately? Okay, then uh, it can be sometimes that we come to worship perhaps uh, burdened by something that went amiss uh, two hours ago, two days ago, two months ago, even years ago, um, the sin and brokenness that, that is in our lives, and so that in the Lutheran Church we have the custom almost always to begin with a time of confession and hearing God's promise of forgiveness so that those burdens can be lifted and we can worship God with joy and praise. So I uh, ask everyone to stand as able so that we can begin with our order of <coughs> confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who created us and <coughs> creates us and forms us, who redeems us and calls us, who unites us and sends us. Amen. Amen. Gathered in God's presence, let us confess our sin. Mighty and loving God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We seek our own way. We divide the body of Christ. In your mercy, cleanse us and heal us. Let the words of our mouths, the thoughts of our hearts, and everything that we do be filled with faith, hope, and love. Amen. <laughs> Hear the voice of Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim release to the captives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I proclaim to you that your sins are forgiven and you are released. The joy of the Lord is your strength, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit are yours forever. Amen. Let us continue our worship singing, Come, ye thankful people, come. <laughs>
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Living God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives make known your glory through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Praise Him, oh praise Him, oh come ye people, praise the 
First lesson is from Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart, to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. The word of the Lord. Second lesson from 1 Corinthians. Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out of him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, 
for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. I'd like to invite any children who would like to come forward for the children's time.
A reading from God's Word. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a level place, with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. May God add a blessing to the reading, to the hearing, and to the preaching of God's word. Let us say amen. Amen. So here I go again, a non-agricultural person in an agricultural state. I'm going to start speaking a bit more about what I spoke about two weeks ago, which is about the whole winnowing process. Um, and I think many of you may know that I uh, served as a pastor in inner city church for a decades, um, 29 years. Somebody asked me, like, you say decades, so 29 years. Um, but anyway, it always seemed important to me there to explain the agricultural references in the Bible because many of the people present had little familiarity little familiarity with farming. So there I was vigorously demonstrating about what it is actually to go through the harvest process if you have wheat. And so I spoke, you know, to the people there, a the lot of uh, children particularly, and you know, children don't always know that you aren't just supposed to, and people were new to church, they don't always know that you aren't really supposed to say anything in church. So this is what happened when I was talking about this. I mean, it's fine if you do, but you know, people, you're not supposed to do that. So in any case, I'm talking about, you know, you've got this pile of grain here, and you've got the wheat inside and the kernel, and you have to separate those two parts. That's called the wheat and the chaff, and so you have this thing, well, if you're lucky, you have cows that can walk on it, but if you're not so lucky, you have to do it yourself. So you have this thing called a flail, which is, oh, you know, a stick like this with a leather thong at one end and another flat stick there, and you have to stand there and you've got to do this a lot <laughs> to all that grain so that you separate the wheat and the chaff. The wheat is the one you want and the kernels are like the pieces on the popcorn. You don't really want that stuff. So then, and then after that, you still have this stuff all together. And so you have to do what's called winnowing, with his, what, which is done with a winnowing fork. And so I'm showing, I'm saying, well, this is what you do. You know, you, and it says in the Bible, his winnowing fork was in his hand. You have to pick up this wheat, you have to throw it up in the air, and then you do this on a windy day and all of that chaff blows away and all the wheat that you want comes back down to the ground. I've never done that, but you know, I, I've been told my family come from agricultural people. So I'm doing this in church and I'm pretending to throw this up in the air and it all blows away. And throw up another one and it all blows away. And Devante Hall, about eight years old, and uh, he just suddenly piped up and said, Pastor Ruth, that would make a mess. <laughs> And he was completely right. That would make a mess. That's what the wind is for. But you know, if I did this in church in the center aisle, it would make a mess. <clears throat> so Friday, I was working on this sermon, but I will confess that I was far more focused on whether I would actually be able to go out for a promised Valentine's Day dinner Friday night. And so I'm checking the weather again and again, and the weather's, you know, like that, trying to see what the radar is showing, whether the clouds are moving this way and that way. And I still haven't lived here long enough to figure out if the weather goes, like, from west to east or east to west, or does it come up from here? And it does everything is what I figured out, basically. So I'm trying to see if I can check what the radar is showing, but that doesn't really make any difference, as if that would make a change. And finally, just for a change of pace, I looked up the internet weather that was reported from the TV station. I'm not watching the TV because I'm not doing that. I'm looking at the words on the internet. And what did it say? We all know what it said. We are having a wintry mess. <laughs> a wintry mess. Now, I expected some sort of dignified language. We expect a mixture of the various forms of winter precipitation or uh, we will need to prepare for a variety of challenging conditions in the next 13 hours. But no, the blunt truth, a wintry mess. And that is what it was. I did get to have my Valentine's dinner, dinner however. It was not too much of a mess. <laughs> And because, as I said here previously, the Gospel of Luke is about this winnowing, this separation, this delineation, what is good and what is bad, what is useful and what is useless, 
what furthers the kingdom of God and what does not further the kingdom of God. Specifically in the familiar words that we just heard, blessed are you and woe to you, Jesus states that changes are going to happen and indeed that changes must happen. And that makes a mess. That is not just a wintry mess, but the kind of changes that Jesus is actually talking about would make and do make and will make a year-round mess. The rich have everything to lose and they will not be happy. The poor have everything to gain, but where is it going to come from? It's going to be a mess. And so listening to those words, we start off by thinking, hmm, does some of this apply to us? Well, you know, if it does, we can't count on what we did count on, our position, our privilege. And another thing, there's going to be reversal. You who are hungry will be filled. That's a good thing to hear at 8.30 in the morning, right? <laughs> And you rich, but it's far more than that, of course. You rich, you've received your consolation. And that mess can mean that even when good things happen, there might still be a mess. I have had the blessing of supervising a number of students preparing for ministry, and it was so interesting to hear the paths that had brought them to sitting in my office. One had been a spectacular journalist. Oh my goodness, when it was his, her turn to preach, I just enjoyed listening to her sermons so much because she was such a great writer. Another had been an actress and a pastry chef in New York City. That might sound like kind of an unusual combination, but maybe when you try to be an actor in New York City, you need to be a pastry chef as well, and maybe one of them will go eventually. <laughs> Another had been a canoeing con instructor in the Boundary Waters of Minnesota. Another had been fully planning to be a college professor. And then each one of them had been called to ordained ministry, but it made a mess of their lives. They had an idea. They had a path. They had a boat. They were in, and the boat, they were taking it somewhere, and somehow God called, and their path changed. Things became messy. And this may have happened to one or another of you, or it may happen in the future, when perhaps God calls you down a path unfamiliar or completely unknown. Repeatedly, I would remind the students sitting with me of the Lakeshore song, You Have Come Down to the Lakeshore. I know that it's familiar here and Messiah because I believe I've sung it here when, I, when I've been worshiping with all of you. Sweet Lord, you have looked into my eyes, kindly smiling, you have called out my name. On the sand I have abandoned my small boat. Now with you, I will seek other seas. Seek other seas? Well, adventure is fun. But abandoning our plans for God's plans, that can make a mess. Woe to us when we are comfortable. God might be at a point of making a mess in our lives. And this is tough. No one wants a mess. Look at how the people who came to hear Jesus are described. They came to hear him and to be healed of diseases, to have the troubling, unclean spirits driven out, to touch him and feel his power, to be healed. It doesn't say they came for a mess. It doesn't say that they came for the hard work of changing their lives, their beliefs, their attitudes, and their behaviors. Who wants a wintry mess? Who wants any kind of mess? And you know, I think we aren't too different from those people ourselves. If things have to change, 
We Americans all often want the quick fix. Look at all the diet promises on the supermarket magazine racks. Look at the popularity of the lottery. Look at all the exercise equipment that is sold. New kind of stuff. This is really going to work every six months or sometimes even more frequently than that. Look at all the promises of politicians. Look at how people play cards. Please, God, please, God, let me have a good hand. Think of what it would be like if any of us, or all of us, received a gift of $100,000, no strings attached. $100,000 for each person here. Wow, we could fix a lot of our problems and challenges with that kind of money, right? And we could do that quickly. That sounds like a great thing. Who wants a mess? Who wants things that involve change and complication? But what did Jesus say to them? There is going to be a change. There is going to be a mess. And what was on top will go down, and it won't be easy. Do not think that you have it made just because you are prosperous or comfortable or people speak well of you. And that's not about you. That's about us. It means me too, me. Do not think, Pastor Ruth, that you have it made just because I am prosperous or comfortable or people speak well of me. And sneak preview now on next week's Gospel from Luke. Not only is there going to be a mess, but God is going to put some very serious challenges out there to those who take God seriously. Next week, part of the gospel says, I say to you that here, so far so good, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Now I'm cutting it off right there because I want to leave you in suspense begging for more next Sunday. <laughs> but you see the point. These beatitudes, as we often call them, are not just about sitting around comfortably, thinking that we are blessed, knowing that we have it made, and that God is looking upon us with favor. There's nothing wrong with feeling that way. But these beatitudes are about the mess that is, and that is coming, when we take seriously God's values and priorities when we take seriously what is our part in helping God's love, God's values, and God's rule be present and live and real here in the world today. Because let's face it, we didn't have to come to church to know something about mess. We didn't have to watch the weather radar or go on a field trip to a snowbound state or tour the inner city to know that things are not as God would want them, that the poor really do need more blessing in their lives, that there really are hungry people and mourning people and all kinds of other struggling people out there and in here who would welcome the kind of mess that the changes that Jesus is talking about would bring. We know that. Okay, kids who listen to the kids' sermon, here it comes. And anybody who listens to the kids' sermon. The children's sermon. <clears throat> My son is 28 years old. When he was about 18 months old, we took him on a trip to Ireland. It involved a lot of driving, and that means it involved a lot of car seat time. There are three things that I remember about that trip in particular. One was that they don't prepare, prepare food real fast in Irish restaurants. So it took us a few days, but we figured out that the best thing to do was to go to a restaurant, sit down, order our food, and then send out one parent or the other with our 18-month son that he could run around, do whatever, you know, look at whatever there was to see in that Irish town, and uh, then come back half an hour later when the food was ready. Second thing we learned, and I'd like to think that whether I had a son or a daughter, I would have raised that child the same way, but um, my son was really into throwing rocks in water. And so after driving for a while, I said, Mommy, Daddy, throw rocks in water. 
he was fairly verbal. And so we'd look at the map and we'd look at where we were and we'd try to find a lake in the next 10 or 15 minutes, release him from his car seat, walk down through you know, the Irish countryside. He'd spend 20 minutes or half an hour throwing rocks in water. Man, just kind of throwing rocks in water. And then he was fine. He was good for another couple hours in the car seat. <laughs> but the third thing, and this is the one that I remember most clearly, gives me those little tingles to tell this story, is that um, we got the chance to visit the ruins of St. Patrick's Church. I don't remember the name in Irish. But in any case, we got a chance to visit these ruins of this church. And so when we pulled up, here was lots of green space. So I thought, oh, this will be great. You know, my son will get lots of chance to run around, green, grassy space. And then there were the ruins of this church. And there were these tall columns of stone, the same kind of limestone that's here, but not irregular. You know, all of them matched. These tall columns of stone and these pieces of arches that mostly were gone and sometimes they were still there, but they were broken at the top. And um, that's what the ruins of St. Patrick's Church looked like. And so my son ran around, and then he looked around a bit, and he looked up and he said, Church is broken. Man has to fix it. Church is broken. Man has to fix it. Church is broken. Woman has to fix it. World is broken. Man has to fix it. World is broken, a mess. Man and woman have to fix it. Amen.
living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe, I believe in, in God, God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffering under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United as one body in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. We pray for the church. Raise up faithful leaders to proclaim the gospel. Guide us in the ways of love. Empower us in ministry and service. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the earth, bless deserts and canyons, farmlands and vineyards. Bring sufficient rainfall to lands parched by drought and restore places scorched by wildfire. Protect fragile environments from harm. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the nations, grant wisdom to our elected leaders for the sake of the common good. Give courage to those who suffer persecution. Give patience and perseverance to those who work to bring an end to injustice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in need, for those who do not have enough food, for those who lack money, for those who are estranged from their families, for those who worry about many things. Comfort those who mourn, heal and strengthen those who are sick, especially Mary Jane Dunn, Zane Gutierrez, Ann Lindemann, and Bethany Tyndall. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this assembly, for newcomers, visitors, longtime members, and those who are absent from us today, root us deeply in your word and increase our faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. With thanksgiving, we remember those who have passed. Encourage us by their example and lead us in faith until we are united at your unending feast. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and fill us with the radiance of your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share God's peace with each other. God's peace. God's peace.
let us pray. God of all creation, all that you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Blessed are you, holy God, the first and the last, life's beginning and its end. You called us to live as your people. You promised to be our God. When time and again we failed to trust your promise and refused to walk in your ways, you sent your word made flesh, the root and offspring of David, to dwell among us and draw us back to you. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Send now your Holy Spirit upon these gifts and all who share this meal. By your Spirit, wipe away all tears and mend with mercy what sin has torn, that we might await Christ's coming with glad and joyful hearts and, at last, Feast forever at the supper of the Lamb. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father Amen. in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, 
now and forever. Amen. Come to the table. Feast on God's abundant life for you.
Let us stand as able. The presence and body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his presence. Amen. Amen. that you have fed us at your banqueting table with bread and wine beyond compare, the very life of Christ for us. Send your spirit with us now that we may set the captive free, use your gifts to build one another up, and in everything reflect your glory, revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 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 This is the time of announcements. Um, things are printed in a, I think it's hot pink, yes, um, insert, so, that's so that we can all see that. But if there's anything that people would like to mention in specific right now, this is the opportunity to do that. Are there any announcements that need to be made this morning? Okay. Please stand again for the benediction as able. The God of glory dwell in you richly. Name you beloved and shine brightly on your path. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always.